So in 1999, Konami released the first ever Yu-Gi-Oh cards in a booster series called Volume 1. In this set, they debuted Dark Magician and Gaia the Fierce Knight, and they debuted what would later be called the Series 1 layout. Now Series 1 cards ran all the way up to the year 2000, so they lasted for about a year, and then they were discontinued for Series 2. What's interesting about Series 1 cards is that they were never touched by Konami from 1999 all the way up until 2018, where they re-released the Volume 1 Booster Pack. They made a couple of changes to the card so that you can distinguish them from its predecessor. And then again, Volume 1 was laid to rest up until 2023, where Konami's celebrating its 25th anniversary, and now they're re-releasing the Exodia in Series 1 layout. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the release of these Exodia pieces, why it's historically significant, and then finally, we're going to be opening up some booster packs in order to try and acquire some of them. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so first things first, we have to understand what Series 1 even means. So Series 1 is a name that is given to cards that have a specific type of layout. In this layout, you'll see a picture of the monster card that's a little bit bigger than the one that we see commonly today. You also have a text box that is much smaller and it only takes up about half of the bottom part of the card and then the other half is occupied by the attack and defense box. This is obviously later discontinued because card effects became a lot more important than the attack and defense of the monsters and with that you had a much bigger text box later on and the attack and defense settled at the very bottom of the card. One other unique thing about series 1 cards is that they did not have the Eye of Anubis stamp at the bottom right. This is really important in terms of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh cards because after this era, the Eye of Anubis stamp is used as an authentication factor when it comes to modern Yu-Gi-Oh cards. If it doesn't have the stamp, then there's something wrong with the card. This makes the original Series 1 cards so desirable in my opinion and so unique. So you might be asking yourself now, how dare Konami reprint these cards? Well, honestly, I totally agree with you. I don't think that it was a good idea for Konami to double dip in that pot and reduce the novelty of those original cards. We have Dark Magicians today. There are many reprints of that artwork. There's no need for them to just basically grab that old historic piece of Dark Magician Gaia, Blue Eyes, whatever, and then just re-release them today. But I do have to give credit where credit is due. And in this case, Konami did allow collectors to differentiate between the two. It was not just grabbing the files from the year 1999 and then reprinting them. They put the Eye of Anubis stamp at the bottom right so that collectors who are trying to get the originals will know the difference. There is also the small change where they shifted the copyright at the bottom right of the card a little bit to the left. And that's really important because if you try to acetone the Eye of Anubis stamp away and it does come off, collectors are still going to be able to differentiate without the Eye of Anubis stamp because the text is shifted a little bit to the left and you'll see kind of like an empty space there where the Eye of Anubis should have been. That space at the bottom right of the card will be a telltale sign for any collector that this card was actually a reprint and it was altered after the fact to look like the original. So that's what they did with the Gaia and the Dark Magician. And those two cards were the only ones that were reprinted. And that lasted all the way up to the 25th anniversary where we had the Kaiba case reprinting the original Jump Festa Blue Eyes with the Eye of Anubis stamp, which I covered in this video here. And now we have the Exodia pieces being reprinted as well. So in the original Exodia pieces release, the cards were actually scattered across all booster sets. It was not like LOB where you got all five pieces in the one core set. They decided to do the same thing here and the first release that they did was the right leg of Exodia. The way to acquire this piece is by opening the booster pack called Duelist Pack Duelist of Explosion. This set is the OCG equivalent of what we have in the TCG called Legendary Duelist Soul Burning Volcano. In that set, you're able to acquire the right leg and the right leg only, and it is randomly seated in your box. It's not guaranteed in the box. However, 
you can pick it up pretty cheaply for around 10 bucks which is in my opinion a huge bargain the second release is the right leg of exodia and that's the box we're going to be opening today this box is called animation chronicle 2023 usually they put a starlight rare that is pretty iconic from the dual monsters era in this set and this year not only do we have the right leg of exodia randomly being seated in the boxes we also have a chance to get an alternate art starlight rare of junk warrior if you guys remember the video where i talked about the biggest letdowns that konami ever did it was not giving us a chase rarity for junk warrior an iconic yusei monster well in the ocg this year they got exactly that and i'm super hyped to try and pull it so what i want to get into now is opening three booster boxes of this set to try and get not only the exodia piece but junk warrior alternate art as well shout out to yugimarket.com this is where i got these boxes from if you guys want to support the channel you guys can go and shop over there for all of your ocg needs they ship literally the next day like i ordered the box on monday i got it in on wednesday and that's all the way from japan like it's actually mind-blowing how fast the shipping is they also have the prismatic god box protectors that you see in all of my videos and the things that you see in the briefcase so if you guys want to support the channel use the links in the description below and use the code strictly you'll get a free booster pack with any purchase that you make thanks for supporting the channel guys and let's get into the opening all right so here are the three booster boxes that we're going to open again i'm going to try and get one of these i hope i can get one and then the second thing i want is obviously the reprint exodia so not to waste any of your time we're going to do some movie magic and boom all right so 30 minutes later we finally cut everything we finally unboxed everything again shout out to yugi market if you guys want to support me support them because they're the ones that are helping me get all of these ocg products to show you guys so anyway let's begin i believe it's guaranteed one starlight per set and we're oh there's the ultra rare and i'm gonna go super fast with this i'm not trying to like take up too much of your time here there's a secret rare parallel rare what did you just get them all in the <laughs> front packs parallel rare so it might be it's guaranteed if you're not getting like one of these super rare parallel come on just give me that junk warrior man this thing looks so badass oh there's the i believe this is the collector rare yeah beautiful card Parallel. The main reason I took them up on this offer is because I want to see those Exodia pieces. I hope that I can show you guys that. That's super rare. That's goals for sure. Actually, this might not be guaranteed Starlight now that I think about it. Especially if this is the only starlight that there is. Parallel. Yeah, I don't think it is. I think you either get guaranteed collector rare or guaranteed ultimate rare or that starlight. Super rare. These are all modern art, so I don't think the collector fan base cares that much about them. So that's why I'm just going through them quick. I hate when they put the hit cards like on the back of the pack because long term, like you're you're hurting the value of the cards because most likely. OK, so you can get them as collector rare or as ultra rares. Because most likely as these things age, they're going to get impressions on the back due to this thing right here. So why would you put the hit card like right on the back? Makes no sense. So you get one secret, one ultra, 
and then this one should be ultimate rare oh no it's collector rare these cards are so nice check this out gorgeous all right come on man junk warrior or exodia piece the exodia piece is so cheap man you can get them for like 10 bucks if I don't get them here, I'm going to literally just go online and grab them. By the way, if you're interested in anything OCG, like if you're trying to buy OCG like cards, definitely recommend you guys check out my Patreon. I have a service there where I pick up your OCG stuff and it costs pretty much like five bucks. And if it's like a card that's like really cheap, it's pretty much 5%. Under $100 is 5%. And then over that is flat $5. So whether you're buying like a $10,000 item or you're buying like a super cheap item, it's all capped at five bucks a piece, which is like pretty incredible in my opinion. I don't think any other service does this. But you do have to be a patron. There's the collector rare. Damn it. Okay, so we did not get the junk warrior. I might just go buy one actually. Because I don't think we're going to get this one in like, I don't think we're going to get it in Starlight in the TCG. Knowing them, they're probably going to do it like Gold Rare or something. And completely ruin the card. And Super Rare. That's pretty much it, guys. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. Check out yugimarket.com. Highly recommend them. These boxes are on sale. Their Rush Dual cards are on sale. And you can use Strictly code on top in order to get free booster pack with your purchase. Thanks a lot, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.